wonderful transformation takes place this time of year. Empty corners become filled with beautifully decorated Christmas trees. Door frames that have been <clears throat> naked all year long are now clothed in garland. Decorations, some that we've had since childhood, are lovingly set out. Now, some houses have light displays that would rival anything you could pay money to see at Walt Disney World. And there's always been a little bit of a debate between, you know, when is it appropriate to start setting out Christmas decorations? There are traditionalists who believe that <clears throat> Thanksgiving must pass before the tree goes up. But people this year began to decorate for Christmas earlier than ever before. In fact, some people started decorating for Christmas in September. Why so early? Well, it's simple. They felt like they needed cheering up. They felt like they needed cheering up. It's been a tough year, and they were hoping against hope that some of the sights and sounds of Christmas might bring them comfort, or as we sang a moment ago, comfort and joy. We want to live in a friendlier, less dangerous, more beautiful world. And in some ways, the sights and sounds of Christmas help create that, or at least allow us to enjoy that illusion. But they can also point to something much, much deeper. They can point to a greater reality that is a true source of comfort and joy. They can point us to Jesus. Shepherds were in the field at night keeping watch over their flocks when suddenly the sky was filled with light. Luke tells us that the glory of the Lord shone around them. An angel of the Lord came to them and they were terrified. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. You don't have to be afraid. Fear not. Now there's been a lot this year that has made us afraid. Even gathering with family and friends around the dinner table now has an increased element of danger to it. Things we used to do without a moment's notice now give us pause. The angel tells the shepherds not to be afraid. Perhaps it was the surprise of the light in the night sky that made them afraid, or maybe the experience of the glory of the Lord shining around them, or maybe it was the sight of an angel, an imposing heavenly warrior, or it may be they were already afraid. The angel tells the shepherds that they do not have anything to fear because God is in control and God is at work for their good. He brings them good news that will be for all people that will cause great joy. Good news that's for all people that will cause great joy. What is this news? It is Jesus. God has sent His Son into the darkness of our world. Light has come, the true light that brings light to all mankind. Into the hopelessness of this world, real hope has come. In the malice and hatred and mean-spiritedness of our world, love has been born. And Jesus, our Lord, is greater than sickness and suffering. He's greater than any problem we may face. Darkness cannot overcome Him. And He is greater even than death itself. He is the reason that we don't have to be afraid. He is true comfort and joy. Today, in the town of David... A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The Savior has been born to us, the one who will save us from our sins. He's the Messiah, the long-awaited, the anointed one of God, the promised deliverer. 
He is the Lord. But he is master. He is sovereign. He is in control. We do not have to be afraid. Today is a day to learn a new word. It's a word that we need to hear regularly. It's a word that I hope can become transplanted on our hearts and in our spirits. It's a Greek word that's so powerful that it takes a bunch of English words to explain it. But it's one of Jesus' favorite words in the New Testament. The word is tharseo. Tharseo. Now, say that with me. Think about how it's spelled and, and get ready. Tharseo. Tharseo. Write it on your mind. Write it on your heart. Trust me, it'll be worth it. It means to be strengthened from within. To have unflinching courage. To radiate warm confidence. To be supported, boistered. To have a bold inner attitude of hope. In our English Bibles, it's often translated, take heart, or take courage, or my favorite, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Tharseo, be of good cheer. Take heart, take courage. A Savior has been born. Three of the Gospel writers tell us about a man who was paralyzed. In our day, there are wheelchairs and many other devices that help those who are paralyzed get from place to place and take part in society. But in the time of Jesus, there was very little hope. But this man had friends. They put him on a mat and they carried him to Jesus. And Mark and Luke tell us that when they got to Capernaum, there was such a crowd in the house and outside the crowd, the house that they could not get their friend to Jesus. But they didn't give up. They didn't go home. Instead, they hoisted their friend onto the roof. They cut a hole in the roof and they lowered the man down at Jesus' feet. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. When Jesus saw the faith of the men who had cut the hole in the roof and lowered the man down, he said to the paralytic, Tharseo, take heart, take courage, be of good cheer. Tharseo, your sins are forgiven. And in those moments, the man's life was changed. What Jesus says shocks the crowd because only God can forgive sins. And Jesus is revealing who He is. He turns to the man and says, Take up your mat and walk. In Jesus, there is forgiveness. In Jesus, there is hope. Now that paralyzed man needed healing. But that isn't what Jesus addressed first. The truth is, being forgiven is more important than your health. More important than money. More important even than a job. For Jesus, forgiveness is the priority. Because if our sins remain unforgiven, it doesn't matter if we have the finest health or if we get the greatest job or if we have a pile of money. Jesus knows what is most important. And forgiveness is the priority. Now, if we could interview this man right now, he would tell us about the day that changed his life, that changed his eternity. And he would assure us about how pleased he was to get back the use of his legs. No doubt the healing gave him cheer for many years afterwards. But ask him now what gives him good cheer, and he will tell you the forgiveness that Jesus brought was the crucial thing. Nothing is more important than forgiveness. That's what brings good cheer now and throughout eternity. In Christ, there is forgiveness. In Christ, there is hope. Because sin in our lives paralyzes us. 
Sin holds us back. Sin diminishes us. Sin destroys relationships. Sin eats away at our hearts. It eats away at our spirits. Our greatest need is for forgiveness. Tharseo, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We can have hope now and for the future. For unto us a Savior has been born. He can forgive sins. He can make us whole. Tharseo, be strengthened from within. Have unflinching courage. Radiate warm confidence. Have a bold inner attitude of hope. For Christ has come to forgive you and me. He has been born to us. He is with us. One night, Jesus sent the disciples ahead in a boat. Strong winds were pushing them. And in the distance of the sea, they saw someone coming toward them. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Tharseo, take courage, take heart, be of good cheer. Tharseo, it is I. Don't be afraid. And just as he came to the disciples that night, he comes to us in the midst of our darkest night, in the midst of our fiercest storm, when things are at their worst, Jesus comes, Tharseo, it is I, don't be afraid. For in Christ there is strength and courage and help. He is with us, regardless of what you're facing Regardless of the problems you are dealing with, in Christ there is strength, in Christ there is courage, in Christ there is hope. He is with us. Now, there's a story in the book of Acts I need to draw your attention to. Because I want you to realize that Jesus' ministry goes beyond that time with His disciples. He is the risen, living Lord And so years after his death and resurrection, Paul finds himself in a tough place. Paul found himself in a lot of tough places. But in this particular account, he's been arrested. He's in prison. And the crowd has almost torn him limb from limb. He's been in a riot. And he's been arrested. And in the darkness of the prison, Luke tells us that the risen Jesus stood beside Paul. The risen Jesus stood beside Paul. Anybody want to guess what he said? Tharseo! Tharseo! Take courage! I am with you. In Christ there is strength and courage and help. He is with us. On the night before Jesus was crucified, He was spending time with His disciples. He was teaching them. He was preparing them for what was to come because He knew they would face great trials. They would not understand why things were happening the way that they were. And it will seem to them that evil will get the upper hand and that they are lost. And so Jesus is teaching them and He's teaching us. Jesus is preparing them And He's preparing us because He wants them to know a peace that passes understanding. He wants their lives to be filled with joy even when facing difficulty. He wants them to have an inner confidence of His love that allows them to face the world. He wants them to be strengthened from within, to have unflinching unflinching courage, to radiate warm confidence, to have a bold inner attitude of hope. And so he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. You reckon that's true? In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Arceo, take heart, take courage, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Regardless of what you're facing, you can face it with courage and hope. 
You can be strengthened from within to have an unflinching courage, to radiate warm confidence, to have a bold inner attitude of hope. Tharseo, take courage, take heart, be of good cheer. For sin has lost its power, death has lost its sting. From the grave he rose triumphantly. Have you let this year get the best of you? Are you depressed? Are you despondent? Do you feel like everything is crashing in on you? Has the weight of the world gotten too heavy? Are you afraid about the future? Tharseo. Take heart, take courage, be of good cheer. Because what Jesus offers you is real. Forgiveness, hope, strength, courage, help. His presence in our lives. He has overcome. The angel meant what he said. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Let the sights and sounds of Christmas point you to a greater reality. Jesus Christ Himself. Father, help us. We are easily distracted. Our minds wander very quickly. But help us this Christmas season to be focused on You. Help us to be so focused on you that we can't help but bring encouragement and strength and hope to our friends, to our family, to our neighbors. We live in a world that seems to be going from bad to worse, and yet you have provided the light that we need through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we have the promises given in your Holy Word. Help us to hold fast to take courage, to be of good cheer. Thank you, Father. Help us to turn our eyes to you, to turn our eyes to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we might know forgiveness, help, and hope. We ask in Jesus' name.